Bond is back in auction. Play the music. Welcome, friends. Welcome, friends. Welcome, one and all. Blair Ballard, the Bon Vivant, very much at your service. I do hope that you are all in the finest of fine forms. Now, we all consider ourselves to be collectors. Maybe you collect props or gadgets. Maybe you've dipped your toes in, into buying first editions of the Fleming original source novels. Maybe, like me, you like the sartorial side of the world of 007 and your wardrobe is packed to the gunnels with Tom Ford and N. Peel goodies. It's an expensive hobby. But when it comes to collecting, nobody does it better, or shall I say bigger, than the vendor of the incredible collection going under the hammer here at our friends Eubanks Auction House in Surrey, west of London. 32,000 pieces of memorabilia, posters, LPs and autographs are going under the hammer. It's such a big collection, it's been split into three parts. We're here to see the first part. We're going to chat to Alistair McRae, who's the, one of the partners here and also the head of entertainment memorabilia about what's going under the hammer and how he's managed to collate and, and catalogue all these pieces and put them under the hammer when it goes on sale this week. Let's pop in and say hi. Right, I'm here with Alistair McRae. Hi Alistair, great to see you again. Alistair's obviously one of the partners here and head of entertainment memorabilia here at uh, Eubanks. We obviously had a great time last time I was here a couple of years ago. I'll put a link up here to that video. If you haven't seen it, it was absolutely brilliant. We went through a dedicated bond auction. You had How many have you done now? You've done seven, eight dedicated bond auctions, haven't you now? Yeah, hi Blair. Yeah, hi. We've done um, probably about six or seven, yeah, you're right. Ah. And they just keep getting bigger and bigger. Oh, it's, well, I mean, this one though, this, you talk about big, I mean, 32,000 pieces. I mean, how did this all come about? How did Steve Oxenrider kind of um, get in touch with you? So, pretty well known in the bond community from all the auctions now. So, um, we've got made a lot of contacts through that way. So we knew of Steve and he was um, selling his collection through a friend of his. Uh, he contacted us, asked if we were willing to take the entire collection, which was a big um, factor in deciding who to go with. Uh, we said we'd happily take everything, uh, all levels, you know, from £50 upwards, and we split it over potentially three to four auctions. Crikey. I mean, it's a bit of a coup for you, Banks, then, because obviously, I mean, Steve is American. I mean, he might have can, you know, gone with one of the American auction sites. So was it literally because of your Bond background, the fact you've done Bond auctions in the past and you were known to the Bond community that really drew, uh, drew him into to Eubanks? Yeah, definitely. That was definitely one of the factors. I think also he knew that you know, Bond being um, a British heritage uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, franchise that he, he thought would you know, potentially do better in the UK. Sure. Um, we have a big mailing list on Bond collectors as well. A lot of the items in the collection are um, were produced in the UK. Sure thing, sure thing. I mean, I've looked through the... I mean, 32... I mean, how long did it take you to kind of collate and catalogue everything for, for at least part one of the auction? Well, this this part of the auction's probably got between three to 5,000 pieces in. So we've obviously got about 1,000 lots, but some of the lots have multiple items in them. Uh, it took us probably about two months to catalogue this section. And how have you broken it up? Because like you say, you mentioned you've got the three parts. Part one is predominantly posters and, uh, is it flat paper you call it? What has it? Yeah, so part one, two day auction. It's all flat paper, promotional materials, stills, lobby cards, um, mainly paper related. Now we've got a few of them laid out here. I mean, are these the kind of ones with the highest estimates or have you, which ones have you picked out for us? Yeah, here? so we've tried to have a selection of items. So obviously we've gone with some high estimate items, uh, along with some more niche items, which are maybe, you know, someone will never see again. Sure, um, but sure, sure. Just, they're so rare. I mean, how do you go about estimate? I mean, is it literally, because I have to confess, a bit like Sean Connery in Diamonds Are Forever, there are limits to my knowledge. Refreshing to hear there's one subject you're not an expert on. So that's why you have to treat me like a newbie, as if I have absolutely no idea, because I don't. So um, what have we got this one here, for example? This, so you know, this is a Thunderball Advance. 
so this is obviously Thunderball was a lot of um, you know Steve's era a lot of the collectors that was the first movie that really got them into Bond because of all of the promotion that went with it uh, it was a huge movie so this is the Thunderball Advance mm-hmm. so this was released prior to the, m- the movie coming out uh, this poster was sent to cinemas with the idea to be cut into four sections. Oh, right. But it hasn't so been cut. So this that hasn't been cut, so this makes it even rarer. Right, um, right. You do see a lot of linen-backed ones which were cut and then pieced back together. Mm. So, they're yes. not, so they're not quite as appealing. So, yeah, you've got the four sections with cinemas we'd have cut up and stuck all in different places all over the cinema. That's so this is an uncut, original... Quad Royal size. Quad is that Quad Royal. Quad Royal is the is, is, Royal. is the vintage term for a, a British quad, which is thirty inches by forty inches. Thirty by forty. I told you. I yeah. know what I'm. Yeah, I can blag it. So I mean, estimate wise. I mean, I mean, when you when you're basing your estimates, is it? I mean, as a newbie to the auction scene, is it basically rarity and condition are the pr- primary factors, or is it kind of like? I mean, how much is this one estimated for? So this one's estimated at twelve to fifteen thousand. <gasps> I shouldn't have touched it. <laughs> Sorry, you had prospective buyers. Crikey. Okie uh, dokie. Yeah, it does come down rarity and condition. Uh, you factor in what the previous prices have been at auction before. Sure. So obviously we've done the research on what the items have made in previous auctions. We've actually sold one of these before. Probably not in quite as good condition. And it made well over the estimate we've got this one in for. It's a come come get me so kind of estimate. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, when, when we filmed before, there was, um, I think you just sold a Dr. No for £22,000. Crikey. I mean, I've, I've seen the, the actual catalogue the actual catalog of, the, of the first part, part of the sale. It seems to me that there, I mean, Steve's collection is obviously vast. But he's got something for everybody. I mean, even on the poster front, you don't have to have massive deep pockets. I mean, to get, obviously, this one, you will have to have deep pockets. But there are pieces that, that you know, posters you can get, which are, you know, the 50 to 60 pound mark. So there's something for all budgets and all, all pockets. Yeah, with, with Steve's collection, he was very interested in, it wasn't necessarily he's collecting for value. Mm. He was collecting because he loved Bond. So there are items in there which are, you know, 20, 30, 40 pounds, right up to, you know, tens of thousands. But I mean, also, let's have a look at the next yeah, one. So Sorry, let's move as, this as you're talking about Doctor No. Ta-da. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's it's box fresh. It's absolutely pristine. It's beautiful. Absolutely yeah. So beautiful. this is actually in, again the one you mentioned before. This is actually in better condition. The one thing which a lot of people collectors do mention is so it has got a white paper snipe over Sean Connery. Because below that in red says as 007. Oh, right. Why do they put that on then? So the printers, it was done at period in 1962. There was a bit of back and forth with Sean Connery being known. He wanted to be known more as Sean Connery rather than oh. as 007. Right. So, so that, leaving that on, that, that increases the value, does it? Or is um, it? I mean, an iconic collector would really want it to be off. And there's potentially they would remove, but it's up to I the, would just, you know, you know if, for me personally, I would leave it as it is because it was done at the time. Sure thing, sure thing. Yeah, it does look amazing. So, dare I say what the estimates for this one would be? The same as the Thunderball Advance, so twelve to 15,000. What you also find on posters is the first colour always to fade is red. So if you're looking at a poster, always look for your reds first because that's UV, does damage to red first. Yeah, right. So you can see how deep these reds are on it. A lot of other Doctor Knows you'll see will have a more orangey red. I mean, I was I was listening to the podcast, the Gavel Gang podcast you did. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link down in the description below where you had a really great chat to Steve about his, not just his life in, in, in with Bond, but his, his background in, in life as well. And he's obviously a very well-traveled guy, but he doesn't have a... Um, he has he built something, a, a kind of a, a space above his, his, car, his garage to store all his... I mean, massive collection. Um, I don't know, I mean, for me, I mean, I, people say, oh, I should, because this is actually one of Daniel Craig's jackets from Quantum of Solace, and people go, oh my gosh, you should be behind glass. I mean, we were talking about, you know, UV protection and stuff. I wear my stuff, I like to enjoy it and get it out in the wild. But he's, he stores most of his um, collection in boxes. I mean, you've mentioned um, in, the, in the podcast that he has like, I think, 15 or 16 frames and he would rotate his, his posters so he can enjoy them. Um, but I know you, some of you guys have got your own bonjons, you've got your collections on display behind glass or what have you. But um, he, I mean, having so many pieces, obviously, it must have been difficult for him to, to, to just 
be able to see it all in one go. Yeah, he's. I mean, yeah. When I spoke to Steve, he did say that he took items out, looked at them from time to time. He had a few he looked at more than others. Some probably never saw the light of day. But hence, you know, that's why the condition is so good because you know they weren't maybe up on walls, getting sun damage, getting you know people um, looking through them. Uh, yeah. So the condition is really, um, you know. Came, came just fantastically well. Well, absolutely. I mean, how did it come to you? Was it just literally in boxes? I mean, was it all, did he semi kind of like collate it and so you knew what you were getting? Or was it just like off the back of a truck, you know, from the, from the, off, the off the boat and then just you have to sort through, I mean, three or four thousand pieces for just part one. And that, no wonder it took you two months. I mean, how, it must have been. I haven't got the patience for that. I'm, you know, especially with something so priceless. Anyway, look, we've, we've looked at, let's look at the next piece. Which one should we look at next? Be very careful with this one. Whoa. There we go. So we look at this. I know this is one of your favourite pieces. Oh there. yes, I did spot this in the in the um, in the in the catalogue. It's German, yes. It's for a German. Yes, this is a German banner poster. It's called. I love that. It's like an Andy Warhol. Andy kind of... Warhol style. Uh, would have been used for promotion. Uh, very nice images. Pretty, you know, design, isn't it? Really, of uh, of of Roger. Yeah, um, absolutely. Which film was this for? Uh, Spy Love Me. You see, now this is again, if you listen to the podcast, which I really urge you to do, um, Steve was asking, you were asking him what, you know, how you, you know, if you're a budding new collector, how you choose where to start, which, you know, which, which posters to go for. And he was going, actually, pick your first film that you, you went to go and see in the cinema. So for me, it would be The Spy You Love Me. Because um, if you get memorabilia and, and maybe sort of, you know, the posters and some of the programs and what have you, that will have a much more kind of resonant uh, resonance with you than just buying one that you think will make the most money or whatever. I mean, and so for me, I mean, how much? What's the estimate on this one here? This one's actually probably quite a common get me estimate. It's five to eight hundred. I mean, I could see that doing you know yeah. a thousand plus all day long. I just I think that the colours really pop and it's, again immaculate condition. It really does does speak to me. But that is absolutely beautiful. So yeah. Maybe maybe it'll nudge over a thousand pounds. But it's that really is the one I would go for. I think so far. Anyway, look, we've got another one underneath, which I know um, some of you guys out there are are, um, are looking at. Talk to me about this one here, because this one really is, is iconic. I think. So this is from the second James Bond movie from Russia with Love. This is a teaser. Um, so again, this is in a double crown size. Mm -hmm. So twenty by thirty inches, half a quad. Right. Uh, advanced teaser. So basically, just showing people James Bond is back. With a striking iconic 007 with the with the gun and the bullets as well. And th this was so famous; it was used in other things, wasn't it? Yeah, it was well, still. I mean, you know, you still see you know them words carried on. You see in the Thunderball, the main poster, they use the words again: "James Bond is back." And when you talk about colours, this is a it's like a pink, pinky red. It's a day glow mm. um, style. So it means that if it was outside cinemas at night, it would really pop out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're walking past, it would try and catch your eye. Well, I think it's great. I know that um, that some of my friends are very interested. The prices, I mean, it's already gone past estimate, hasn't it? Or it's getting... It's, it's... Yeah, it's getting close. What's 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 the estimate for this one so here? This one's five to eight thousand. But again, you know, slice upon history. And how old is this poster would have come out for, for you know, from Russia would level before? So we're talking, you know... Like, yeah. Yeah, we're talking sort of 60 years. Ish. I mean, that's, it's still, I mean, amazing condition. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think everybody should have a Bond poster in their collection on their wall somewhere. It just kind of ties the collection, your, your own collection together. So you know, how, I was going to ask you a bit, registering to bid, I mean, how can the guys um, uh, sort of bid? Is it on the phone? Is it online? What are the different ways? Yeah, can... so the different ways you can do it, you can do it online, which is what most people do nowadays. Sure. Because uh, you can just log in when you want the lot, you know, if the lot comes up. Mm -hmm. And then come out again. Some people do come, still come to the room. Oh, you could do that now. I yeah, know with COVID, can, obviously, can, with you know. Yeah, the... they can know they can bid in person, and also we do telephone bids as well. That gets a bit of a bit of a bit of tension. And you have yeah. the video, don't you, of the um of the when the actual auction's going on, so you can see what's going on and get the get the vibes and the feel. But um, I mean, I I have in the past. Have you, you know, have you been to auctions? Not not your no, but okay. um, but I've been, I've I've bought stuff through you, but but I get click fever. Right? You oh, know, okay, there are certain yeah. things, and I just uh, keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> I'm really hopeless. But I mean, yeah, there are certain pieces. Have you got a particular poster or, or piece from part one that you would you know if you weren't obviously you know a kind of uh, in in you know working for you banks you would you would bid for? Have you got? I know because your Golden Eye is your was your first film, wasn't it? Yeah, Golden Eye was the first first Bond I saw in the cinema. So that was kind of one that always resonates with myself. 
I mean, I always like the simple designs because I always think they sometimes just say much more. Yeah. Um, so this this would be up there with one of my favourites. I think um, so, yeah. It's just simple, striking. It screams Bond to me. Absolutely. I mean, also, I was going to talk about, um, because um, if you read, again, if you listen to the podcast, Steve is a very, very well-travelled guy. I mean, he's been to sort of 80 countries and uh, a lot of the Bond locations. But it also, and he was a teacher, I think, in Spain, wasn't mm -hmm. he? So it, kind of, I mean, are there lots of um, posters from the kind of like from his travels? I mean, the Spanish, Italian, or you know, the Japanese kind of uh, posters as well. I know a lot of the guys are very, very, you know, they're very popular with some of the some of the collectors. Yeah, the the mammoth thing with this job was there were so many posters from so many countries in so many sizes. You know, with English, with U.S., with French, German, Italian, Spanish. Japanese, um, with some Indian posters, Thai. Wow. It just, it never stopped. And you, you kept thinking, have I seen this before? Because, <laughs> like, yeah, you'd... My Japanese is a bit rusty. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to tell Japanese. From, but, but, uh, but, yeah, a very well-traveled guy. Um, and, and, but he was also talking about the podcast. He was talking about the fact that, that collecting and looking after these posters, he didn't want, you know, that... You can support the franchise by going to see the films, obviously, but also by preserving uh, for posterity the posters and all the memorabilia and, and the bits and pieces as well, the, the promo, promo materials. You're also keeping the franchise alive doing that as well for, for future generations. I mean, it's, I think it's, it's an admirable art and um, a, a worthy hobby to, to pursue. OK, now moving on, Alistair, what have we got here? So we've got, uh, these are premiere programmes. Uh -huh. So we've got one for Thunderball. Oh, cool. One for You Only Live Twice, and then we've got the Scottish one for Diamonds Are Forever. Oh, fantastic. And am I right? He, I mean, because Steve was, you know, and, you know, when he went to got the programme, he also got, he's got his tickets and stuff. Can you, can we have a look inside? Yeah, so a lot of them do have tickets. So this one, for example, inside. You can see, so it's got the, uh, the premiere ticket for Diamonds wow. Are Forever. Wow, and that coming is coming together as one. That lot. comes together as one package, yeah. Oh, fantastic! And how much? Should, what's the estimate for that one there? Do you think? So that one you're looking probably three to five hundred. So okay. Not, not a huge amount. Sure, sure. This one's probably the big money one. Iconic, yeah. iconic. Again, look at the striking design on the front. And the colour. I mean, I mean, that's you know something you could have as a poster on your wall, and but actually having the program. So that from the premiere, is it? From the premiere, yeah. You can see inside. We've got a nice little signature. As oh well. yeah, Luciana Paluzzi. Crikey! Yeah. Oh wonderful. I met her. She's just lovely. Really lovely. Still got it. I mean, she's you know, in her kind of a, you know maturing nicely. Let's say. Um, but yeah, oh, wow. She's yeah, absolutely. You can see uh, the cinema. London Pavilion. Yeah, 1965, 29th of December. Fantastic, but as you say, the colour, I mean, it's amazing condition. I mean, the colours really do, are vibrant still. And, you know, simple, as you say, like a nice, simple, simple design, but really, really eye-catching. Yeah, so I think that one's estimated 700 to 1,000. We're currently up to, bids up to 1,700 already. Already, so it's sale past. It's sale past that. Oh, wow. And still the auction to come. I know, so I mean... <laughs> and here we go. Um, you only live twice. I mean, you only that's live twice. So again, when it moved across the Odeon, so mm -hmm. got Odeon Theatre, Leicester Square. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. That was became the home of Bond, didn't it, for, yeah. for the premieres yeah, and yeah. so on. Um, then see, we obviously move away from the Christmas releases. Oh yeah, some, so June, June, June twelfth, June twelfth, nine six seven. So yeah, summertime. You know, mm -hmm. the Queen, her Madge was there. Bless her, Gorblami Governor, lovely. <laughs> it's fantastic. And uh, what are we looking at for this one here? I mean, really, what people look for in the premiere brochures is if any pages are missing, if they're ripped, if they've got major marks or damage. Um, but again, you know, these are you know relatively good condition for the age of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I, again, I don't know. I mean, some people obviously click the posters. Some people like you know collect the programs. Um, how much we're looking at for that one there? Do you think you're probably looking at about three to five, four to six hundred for that? Great stuff. Great stuff. Now in the front here, I. I I always find these curious. The, I mean, the the, the color, when they're colorized, how does I'm um, so which ones have you got here? What these we've got Doctor No. So Doctor No. So these are U.S. lobby cards. So again, for the U, these these were printed for the U.S. market. Uh -huh. You can always tell at the bottom. So I'd say printed in U.K. or U.S. Um, you've got the date on them as well. So 1962. Oh wow, cool. Uh, always come in sets of eight for the US and UK ones. You've got, so you've got eight different stills from the film. And they all come together as one lot? All come together as one lot. So the good thing about lobby cards is they give you a real insight into the movie. So these would have been again released before the movie came out. So like, instead so of having like a teaser trailer or, you or know. Or one single poster, you could actually 
kind of sort of get an idea of what was going on in the, in the movie. Sure, sure. Get you sort of get your juices flowing, get you excited about what's to come. Wow, wonderful. Now again, all of our brand, you've got a lot to answer for because they released, um, you know, the the Doctor No pale blue shirt, which you see in the actual film. But then they use the these lobby cards to say, oh, well, this is you know another color we can do the run in because it was done in you know like so you got like this is you know he's in this this um, obviously he's wearing kind of like a salmon pink shirt, which obviously is not the one he wears in the film, but that's what you know they thought oh we can add that to the collection. Uh, anyway, um, this one here as well. Let's have a look at. Yeah, um, oh, she's not wearing, I thought she was wearing the, um, the, the uh, bathrobe. We had the, I was at the um, prop store a couple of weeks ago and they, have the, they just sold the, the, um, the, the bathrobe that Ursula Andress wore in the, in the scenes on Dr. No's Island in Crab Key. Um, and went for big money, I think 60, 70 thousand pounds. And wonderful. But yeah, I mean, so how much were we looking at for the set? How many, so it was eight did you say? So eight in a set and you're looking at probably a thousand to fifteen hundred. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. Now we've got a bit of a treat now, a bit of a teaser. This is these are all coming up in the part two of the auction, which is coming up in is it spring? In spring, yeah, spring March. next year, March yeah. next year. So what what's I mean? These are obviously toys and and, and the scripts and so on and so forth. Is that the main thrust of the of the of the second of the second part of the yeah, collection? Yeah. So, so moving away from mainly paper, so more into yeah toys, promotional material. It's a, it's a wide range in collection. I know toys were your, when we spoke in the last um, the last video, toys were kind of your kind of thing that you like to collect for, for the bonds. Yeah, I've always had a soft spot for toys. And there's, uh, there's a few special ones here. Well, yeah, I mean, should we start here? This is like, you know, pretty iconic, really. Tell us a bit about this one here. I mean, I've never seen one in the flesh before. This is the attache case, so made by multiple. Uh, box is absolutely brilliant for the age. It's just, I mean, absolutely mint, mint, mint condition. The colours are all crystal clear and very bright. There's no fading. I mean, even the corners are just, it's just crisp and, and it's beautiful. When did this come out? Uh, it's just sort of been 60s, so round about, uh, you know, from Russia with Love, Thunderball time. Of course, uh, I mean, the, the case obviously yeah. was, you know, and you've got the AR, uh, rifle as well that um, that obviously featured in uh, in from Russia with Love. If you haven't seen the video, I don't know if I put a link up before, but I'll put a link here. The last time we were here, we we got to see a, one of the SD Studios uh, attaché cases, which was again rarer than hen's teeth. But what are we looking at, and what's the estimate for this? So this provisionally we're looking at probably two to three thousand estimate. I mean, have, you, have you seen one there? In a we while? haven't actually opened this one up yet. Can we do it? Can we do it? Let's do it. Do it. First time you've yeah. seen this side as well. Oh, wow. Here we go. Let's have a look. Ta-da. Wow. Whoa. Look, it's still in its, its cellophane wrapping. That's incredible. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Amazing. And look at this. It's still in its cellophane. Amazing. Okay, here we go. Whoa, look at that. In pristine instructions here. What do we have in here as well? We've got, oh wow, there's a wallet. You've got the 007 money clip there. Oh no, this is the actual knife. This is the knife that will go in the yes. side. You've got some cash. An international passport here. <laughs> look at that. It's all just absolutely pristine. So you can fill in your details name, your details there. Vaccinations. Okay, anti-vaxxers, take note. There we go, pop that back in there. And then, so that's your knife. We'll go in the side. Let's have a look at the instructions. Look at this. Oh, here we go, look. Each lock knob has a finely engraved dagger on its surface. To open the case, set the dagger points as follows. So look, this is how you can you know, you know, do the booby trap. So you can release the knife. Wow, that really takes you back in time. Now, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's unbelievable. Just, it's time warp condition. Immaculate, codomatic. bless them, I love that everything was omatic in those days, or turbo back in the 80s as well. Yeah. Just put turbo on, made everything cooler. But that is just amazing. And you've got secrets. There's the booby trap explodes when opened wrong. Read instructions on the equipment. Important secret trigger. Set tray in case this. Uh, I'll leave this for the actual 
the lucky guy who, or, girl, or girl who buys this because it's just amazing. And, you know, considering that the SD Studios attache case went for... How much was it? 18,000. 18,000. This has got a estimate of... We're probably going to go two to three. Two to three. So you can like save yourself a fortune. And I think it's more fun as well. <laughs> really very, very cool indeed. Somebody's going to be a very, very happy... Happy chappy or chapette. Imagine as a kid getting this and just ripping it open straight away. It's yeah, I know. It's, it's stayed. Yeah. It's, I know. I mean, uh, yeah, that'd be me. I'd be just tearing into it. But I mean, if you were a kid back in the 60s, you would be the, the coolest guy in school if you brought this into school with you. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, walk, walking around school with a briefcase. Yeah, so cool. I don't think you could do it now, though, with a... With a gun, exactly. <laughs> or a rifle. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Oh, it's so cool. Oh, that's, that really made my day. That was wonderful. Now... What have we got next? We've got you want to go for the figures, I think, yeah. Yeah, we so we've got those? the two Gilbert, the early sixties figures. So we've got a uh, James Bond and a Harold Sakata odd job. Oh, what again? Just pristine condition. Wow. And often the issue you find on these is the it's the accessories, the clothing that goes missing, the instructions. But as you can see, everything's there. He's got his little fins on, his flippers. Fantastic. And what's inside this? Oh, he's got, he's got the snorkel. And he's got his own little briefcase. What? Oh, yeah, wow. Attaché case. Attaché case with yeah. the gun as well. Oh, that's so cool. And he raises his arms up as well with the gun. I don't want to put it. Oh, that, oh wow. Look. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Thought of everything, didn't they? Yeah, so that goes in there. Look at that. A grenade. And you've got a grenade, and you've got, the, oh, that's so cool. I used to love these kind of stuff when I was a kid. I used to have an, um, a six million dollar man, and Oscar, you know, oh, Oscar Goldman. Oh, I used to love all these kind of, that's brilliant. And obviously Action Man as well. But now Harold Sakata as well, uh, again, sorry to keep going on about it, but the, um, but the, um, uh, the Gavel Gang, um, uh, podcast you did with Steve and he was talking about his first uh, kind of he used to be an autograph kind of hunter really um, um, and he called up Harold Sakata he just looked him up in the phone book it's amazing tell the story you know it's yeah, amazing yeah so he looked, looked up in the phone book did a reverse call yeah. <laughs> and so the operator you know gets on to Harold Sakata and says I've got uh, you know a fan on the phone and I managed to speak to him and then actually late, in later years did, did a really um, iconic interview with him and that was a rare thing. I'm sure there weren't many recordings of Harold Sakata talking, talking Bond. But I mean, that's, I mean, that's brilliant. Now, I mean, let's have a look at, let's have a quick look at Odd Job here. So this is, this is actually rarer than the, than the James Bond. Is it really? What, what disappeared a lot was the headband. So it's actually the headband from the, it shouldn't be around him like that. <laughs> oh, it should be around the, the hat. Yeah. Oh, wow. So they're actually, they went missing so easily. I can imagine. It's like the little figure you get in your, your Corgi ass, yeah. DB5. They just go behind the sofa and then disappear for, forever. But that is oh, pristine. And his little little shorts, fantastic. Oh, wow. And again, with the instructions in there too. Yeah, I mean, oh, right in the bottom there. Yeah, absolutely. Again, it's, it's just... And how much? How much do these? So you say that the, how much would would, um, would Sean go for? Probably around one fifty, two fifty. Uh huh. Estimate. And then odd job, you're looking at probably three to five hundred. Wonderful. See the, uh, see the action, the hat action. <laughs> odd job's hat becomes a lethal weapon when he throws it. <laughs> To produce the throwing action, insert the hat between the thumb. So he actually throws. Oh, and there you can hat. see in this thumb here. Yeah, we'll go get a close up of that. That is amazing. How cool is that? Well, so you re so how much for odd job? Sorry. Three to five hundred. Three to five hundred. Brilliant. Now, I know there are lots of watch fans out there. I spotted these in front here. What have we got here? So not, not quite Omega or Rolex, but uh, <laughs> we've got the next best thing. So we've got uh, some promotional watches. Okay, from, uh, uh huh. So that's a Timothy Dalton era. Yep. Uh, official quartz watch. But again, you know, these are making relatively good money now, especially one in its bubble. You're looking at probably, you know, two, two to three hundred. Wow, okay. I mean, it's. Yeah, I mean, it's a shame you have to keep it. I know it's the same with like Star Wars figures. Yeah, they're, as soon as you take them out of the bubble, that's it. You know, the yeah. value goes down. But, you know, and I suppose if you're collecting, that's that. But, you know, I like to enjoy it. I've got my Mega on there. But, yeah, but uh, you know, it's, um, 
I, I like to be able to use my things, but I understand, keep them pristine, that's why the where, where the value is. Oh, wow, okay. Another one here, this is, looks quite fun. Yeah, that's a bit of fun, that one, isn't it? With the secret uh, earphone, isn't it? Yeah, you can stick, so stick, and stick it in your ear. <laughs> that's fantastic. <laughs> Wonderful. What's the value of, of this one here, the estimate? Uh, it's probably a little bit less, because it's slightly later, so you're probably looking at sort of one to two hundred, something okay. like that. Okay, bit of fun, though. Mm. Great stuff. And another, this is a Rod, another Roger Moore one here. Let's have a look. What have we got? And they all play the James Bond theme tune when you, when you, when you press the press yeah. side. Oh, that's mm -hmm. good fun. So it's a bit like the, the Dalton one here, yes, but it's just a little bit earlier. But you see that one's actually been removed at some point. Oh, there's a bit of yeah, sure thing. But yeah, a bit of fun. Mm -hmm. A value for this, same sort of you yeah, know. It seems to, yeah, sort of around 100, 150. Oh, great stuff. Now this looks quite fun. Uh, a snorkel for but Voight. They made the obviously the fins, the flippers for mm -hmm. for Thunderball and all the underwater sequences. There. What's the story behind this one here then? So this is really when promotion for Bond went through the roof. So Thunderball. Um, I mean, absolutely amazing to see it still in its original. Hello, it's incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Package. Not been touched and not perished at all. So, but obviously keeping it and wrapping again if you want to be collecting. But, but with the 007, it's it's really sweet. Yeah. Everything splashed. It's already started in the marketing. Yeah, blitz as you say. H two O snorkel blaster. Aye. <laughs> Crikey, but he's got his gun there. Sean Connery, I've seen James Bond and Thunderball. So, yeah, it's, this must have come out at the same, you know, for Thunderball. Same time. I mean, this, this one's got a really American feel to it, doesn't it? Look at this. I love it. For breathing with head underwater, also secret weapon shoots water. <laughs> Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. And the estimates for this one here? Probably around 150, 250. Oh, it's great fun, though. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, these look quite special. This is from Dr. No. What have we got here? So we've got an original dialogue continuity script for Dr. No. You can see, amazing to have it on original pages. Uh, and not faded, I mean, not sort of, you know, gone yellowed or... Yeah. So we've got, again, you know, real one, parts A and B, song of three blind mice in a row. So we've got the music coming in, and we've got Strangways, Dent, and then, you know, oh, wow. Amazing, amazing. You know, that, that's history. That's, that's... Yeah, that's, I mean, wow. super rare, seeing anything from Dr. No. Look, I go, Bond, you know, quarrel, cut some of those reeds, get me the knife, over there. Honey, they're coming closer. I, oh, that's, I mean, Miss Tarot, oh, brilliant. I mean, I, I mean, slice of Bond history, how much are we looking at for this? I, I haven't even really thought about it. It's so uh, early, I mean, I'd be thinking it's going to be yeah, into the thousands. Oh, I, but, I mean, that's... Uh, you've nothing to compare it against. That's, that's the thing, you know, it's so rare, it's... Pre-production, Doctor No. Amazing, absolutely amazing. I've held it in my hands. Now, this is um, obviously for from Russia with Love. I love that they've done the kind of Russian-ish kind of script on the front here. Um, this is a full script. That, yes, the other one was a dialogue continuity yeah. script. Mm -hmm. This is a full script here, released through um, United Artists. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Instructions to laboratories on how to do the dialogue filters and oh, wow. Then we've got the oh, Kerim and then Bond. Thanks for sending the car, but it does rather tie you in with me. This is incredible because this is the scene that uh, Eon uses when they're screen testing for new Bonds. We've got um, Tanya and Bond's conversation when they meet for the first time. He goes, ah, so you're Tatiana Romanova. My friends call me Tanya. Mine call me James Bond. And that's, but now we've been introdu properly introduced. Push the gun away. Ah, oh, careful, guns upset me. That's what they use in the actual screen tests when they're like, um, yeah, um, we had for Sam Neill, uh, James Brolin, they all had to do this particular scene when they're screen testing. Amazing piece of history. I mean, this is the actual, one of the actual scripts. Unbelievable. Um, and it's amazing that they could survive. I know, I know, absolutely incredible. What are we looking at for this? Again, you don't, you're you looking, don't. yeah, thousands. early days, but again, you're looking probably in the thousands. Because probably. all of these are for, for part two. All of this for part two in March. But we'll come back in March to, to cover more of the lots going to the sale when, you know, they've been sort of collated and, and catalogued and, and, and prepped for sale. But to hold this script in my hand and the, I mean, <sighs> amazing. I mean, this was probably two or three boxes I opened. We've got half a container full to go through. So there's plenty more so. material when I come back in March. <laughs> but I just want to say a huge, huge thanks to Alistair. Thanks so much. It's always a pleasure seeing no you. Pleasure. And 
poring over these incredible treasure, you know, treasures from uh, from from Steve's Oxen Riders collection. Absolutely incredible. Um, I'd also like to thank James, who's behind the camera on camera duties, and we're doing editing later on as well. Um, absolutely legend. Thanks for stepping up. But for now, this has been Alistair McRae and Blair Ballard, the Bon Vivant, bidding you a very Bond farewell. Stay safe, my very good friends. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please do consider smashing those like and subscribe buttons. Do turn on notifications so you know when the next video drops. Also, leave some comments down below as to any videos you'd like to see in the future. But for now, stay safe, friends. We'll see you next time.